Have you ever paused to think about the everyday tools that have fundamentally changed how we live and work? Mm. I mean, something as common as your cordless drill. Right. That thing you grab for almost everything. Exactly. That indispensable piece of equipment for, you know, assembling furniture, home projects, all that stuff. Where did it actually come from? It's a good question. Because if you're like a lot of people, you might have heard a very specific story. It's uh, incredibly compelling, actually. The NASA story. Yeah, the NASA story. Yeah. That the cordless drill and maybe other battery-powered tools, too, were first invented by NASA. Right. Specifically for astronauts. For space missions. That's the narrative. Developed for space. Yeah. Then, you know, trickled down to us regular folks here on Earth. It's a classic space spinoff tale, isn't it? Very inspiring. Totally. Well, today on The Deep Dive, our mission is really to unpack that persistent myth. Get to the bottom of it. Yeah, dig into why that story feels so true, but also uncover the uh, the fascinating reality of how these tools truly came into being. And maybe get a clearer view on innovation itself along the way. I think so. Get ready for some um, genuinely surprising facts. It might just change how you look at the tools in your own garage. Okay, I'm ready. So let's dive right into that popular belief. The story pretty much goes like this. Mm. Astronauts needed to work out there in the vacuum of space. Right. Far from any power outlets. No extension cords on the moon, right? Yeah. So NASA, being this you know powerhouse of innovation, supposedly engineered the cordless drill. Just like that. From the ground up. Making space operations possible. Exactly. And then from those uh, lunar frontiers, this amazing tech finds its way into our homes, onto job sites. It paints a very clear picture, space exploration directly driving commercial innovation. It does. And, you know, it's an incredibly compelling narrative. It really resonates, doesn't it? Well, absolutely. Because NASA truly has this unparalleled reputation for, well, for pioneering technology, for engineering breakthroughs. The public rightly associates them with huge achievements. Yeah, moon landings, mm -hmm. rovers. Exactly. So that makes the story instantly believable. And the thing is, NASA has actually contributed to countless commercial innovations we use every day. That's true. Like what? Oh, things like memory foam, you know, in your mattress or pillows or uh, scratch resistant lenses for glasses. OK, yeah. Even those infrared ear thermometers makes taking a kid's temperature so much easier. That's NASA tech originally. Huh. I didn't know about the thermometer one. Yeah. So it's completely understandable why people would just readily assume a space origin for something as, well, revolutionary and commonplace as a cordless tool. It fits the pattern. OK, that makes perfect sense why the story took such strong root. And like you said, it's not entirely baseless, is it? There's a grain of truth in there. There is a kernel of truth that really fuels the misconception. NASA did partner with tool manufacturers back in the 1960s. Right. Specifically, they worked with a really well-known company, Black & Decker. Yeah, everyone knows them. And those collaborations were genuinely focused on developing battery-powered equipment, stuff that could actually work in space, in zero gravity. So the connection is real. NASA, Black & Decker, cordless tools. Hmm. It happened. It definitely happened. It's just the nature of that connection that gets misinterpreted. It wasn't an invention story from NASA's side. Oh. And it's crucial to remember these high profile NASA projects, they weren't secret. They got loads of media attention back then. Right. The space race was huge news. Totally. Imagine seeing astronauts on TV, you know, training with these special battery power tools or reading news reports about gear being developed for Gemini, for Apollo. Yeah, you'd naturally connect the dots. Exactly. It just reinforced the public's idea that these tools were invented by NASA, or at least for NASA's missions. Mm. Those images, especially tools on the moon later on, built this incredibly strong association. Almost unforgettable. Okay, so we've laid out the myth why it's so sticky. It's a great story, no doubt. It really is. But now let's uh, let's unravel the actual truth. Because the real story, I think you'll find, starts much earlier and, frankly, a lot closer to home than outer space. Yeah, not quite orbit, more like the workshop. So if they weren't born in space, where did they really come from? Well, what's really fascinating here is that cordless tools were actually uh, well into development before NASA even came knocking. Before, really? Yeah. Black & Decker, for example, the same company linked to the NASA story, they'd already started working on cordless tool prototypes in the early 1960s. Early 60s. Okay. And this wasn't some, you know, top secret government thing at first. It was pure market-driven innovation. Market-driven, meaning? Meaning people actually wanted them. 
Think about it. Imagine being a contractor back then, late 50s, early 60s. You're on a new construction site. Maybe no power yet. Right, or just a homeowner trying to hang a picture far from an outlet. Exactly. You were constantly limited by those bulky power cords, mm -hmm. needing tangled extension cords everywhere, or just relying on slow, tiring hand tools. Yeah, that sounds frustrating. Definitely. So there was this clear pressing demand from both pros and regular consumers for tools that were portable, convenient, not tied to a wall socket. Freedom from the cord. That was the goal. Portability was a key priority for commercial success, not some, you know, accidental bonus from space tech. Yeah. That real world need, that frustration was the engine driving the early development. And here's where the timeline gets really crucial, I think. It helps bust the myth. So Black & Decker's working on these ideas. Yeah. When did the first commercial cordless electric drill actually hit the shelves? Was it still after NASA got involved? Ah, this is the kicker. You might be surprised. The first commercial cordless electric drill was released by Black & Decker in Surprise. 1961. 61, wow. 1961, let that sink in. Years before any NASA space mission needed tools like that. Years before Armstrong walked on the moon. Way before. But drills were already going cordless right here on Earth. It totally flips the narrative, doesn't it? It absolutely does. Okay, so then fast forward to 1965. NASA does contract Black & Decker. They need a special battery-operated drill for the Apollo missions. Right. But based on what you're saying, Black & Decker wasn't starting from a blank slate. They already had something to work with. Exactly. They had a solid foundation. Yeah. They weren't inventing the cordless drill for NASA. So what did NASA need then? What was so different about space that required adapting the existing tech? Yeah, that's the key distinction. They took their existing research, their early prototypes, and they adapted them. Massively adapted them, really, for NASA's incredibly specific needs. Like what kind of needs? Well, think about space. The vacuum means no air for cooling the motor. Heat dissipation becomes a huge problem. Okay, yeah. Needed ultra-low power consumption. Battery life was absolutely mission critical. You can't just plug it in up there. Makes sense. And, probably the most famous one, they had to design a drill that wouldn't create torque that would spin the astronaut around in zero gravity. Ooh, yeah, I've heard about that. Like a reactionless drill. Essentially, yes. They had to counteract that rotational force. These were all really complex engineering hurdles. It pushed their existing tech to new limits. But the core idea, the cordless concept, that was already there, born from earthly demand. So NASA didn't invent it. They perfected it for an extreme environment. You could say that. They drove specific, very advanced adaptations. Okay. Connecting this to the bigger picture then, mm. it's clear NASA didn't invent cordless tools. Yeah. But wow, they certainly did an amazing job popularizing them, didn't oh, they? Oh, absolutely. Huge impact there. Those tools used during the moon missions, they were shown everywhere. Global news. It created this really lasting impression that space exploration was the sole cause, the origin point. Yep. That visibility was immense. So in truth, NASA played this critical role in what? Validating the technology demonstrating what it could do, even in the toughest conditions imaginable. Exactly. Validation and demonstration in a high-profile, extreme environment. But the genesis, the initial spark that was firmly here on Earth, driven by market needs. Which brings us to a really important point, I think. Why does this even matter? Why bother correcting the record on something like a cordless drill? It seems kind of trivial, maybe? It might seem like just a historical footnote, yeah. But I think it's much more than that. It helps us get a more accurate picture of how innovation actually works as a whole. I agree. It's not just about getting the fact right. It's about understanding the real um, dynamics of how technology advances. Right. It teaches us that innovation isn't always, you know, a single lightning strike moment or yeah. even just the result of massive government funding for some grand project. It's usually messier than that. Often, yeah. It's frequently this complex interplay between different forces. You've got consumer demand, like those contractors wanting freedom from cords. That drives things. Right. And you have intensive private sector R&D. Mm -hmm. Companies like Black & Decker investing time and money to solve those everyday problems. Right, the engineers and designers. Absolutely. And then sometimes you get these really impactful public sector partnerships, like the NASA one, which can accelerate things, refine tech, validate it in powerful new ways. So it's like an ecosystem, demand, R&D, sometimes a big push from government or space programs. Exactly. A dynamic ecosystem, not just a simple line from A to B, invention to product. And thinking about the myth, when we just give all the credit to NASA for the cordless drill, what's the consequence? 
Well, we risk overlooking the really significant years-long contributions of countless engineers, designers, manufacturers working in the private sector. The people who made it a reliable, affordable reality for regular folks. Precisely. They were solving the practical problems, battery life, motor efficiency, making it comfortable to hold. It kind of diminishes their ingenuity if we just say, oh, NASA did it. Yeah, it erases a big part of the story. It does. And it also corrects that common idea about how innovation happens. It's not always these giant leaps or brand new inventions out of nowhere. More often, innovation happens incrementally. Little improvements, building on what came before, it's often collaborative. And like we saw here, very frequently driven by market necessity, Someone sees a problem people have. A hassle of cords. And starts working persistently on a practical solution, bit by bit. So the next time you pick up your cordless drill, I hope you'll see it a bit differently. Not just as a handy tool, but as this really remarkable piece of tech. Born from decades of refinement. Yeah, and crucially, consumer-centered innovation that started right here on Earth. Not in orbit. Absolutely. NASA's involvement gave it huge prestige, incredible visibility, no doubt. Space usage was amazing validation. But not the origin point, not the invention itself. Exactly. Validation and public demonstration more than pure invention. So maybe a final thought for everyone listening. As we keep seeing new breakthroughs, you know, whether yeah. it's for exploring Mars or just making our daily lives easier. Yeah. Remember that the path of innovation often winds through really practical everyday needs. Through those iterative improvements long before it ever reaches for the stars. Huh, that's a great point. Makes you wonder. Right. Maybe it encourages you to think about what other common knowledge stories about where things came from might hold some equally surprising truths.